Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, find all numbers disappeared in an array. We're given an array of nums and the length of that array is gonna be n. Uh, and we know for sure that every single number in this array is gonna be in the range uh, between one and n. And we wanna return an array of all the integers in this range that do not appear in nums. So let's look at a really simple example. Let's say we were given n equals four. That means that the size of our array is gonna be four. I don't know if this is actually possible or not, but maybe we're given one, two, uh, three, four. So we're given all the numbers in the range one through n, where n is four. So in this case, uh, what would we return in the output? Because all of them appear in the input array. So maybe in this case, we just return an empty array. But what if we actually had two, uh, four values? So we have one, two, four, four. In that case, the numbers in the range one through four that don't appear in this array is exactly three. Uh, maybe we're given uh, one, four, four, four. Uh, so in that case, the numbers that don't appear in that range are two and three. So this is what we would return. So the easiest way to solve this problem, obviously we wanna first get every number in the range one through N. So we would want to have one, two, three, four. And then we'd wanna actually iterate through the input array, whatever it happens to be, and then check, uh, do those values exist in the range? If they do exist in the range, then from our data structure, we would remove them. So suppose we were given uh, this array, one, four, four, four. In that case, we'd iterate through each of these. Okay, we see a one, then we're gonna remove one from our data structure. Uh, we see a four, so we're gonna remove four from our data structure. We see another four, uh, but it's already been removed, so we don't have to do anything. Uh, and again, we see the last four, it's already been removed, so we don't do anything. And the values that are left over, two and three, are gonna be our result. Obviously we wanna remove each of these values in big O of one time. That's the most efficient way we could do it. Uh, we can't uh, have a list, right? This data structure can't be a list because you can't just remove arbitrary values in O of one time. So the data structure we would use is actually a hash set. And this solution does work. Uh, the time complexity will be big O of N because we're just iterating through the list and then making a very simple operation on our hash set. But the memory complexity is also gonna be big O of N because we have a hash set. And their follow-up question is, can we solve this problem uh, with big O of one memory complexity? And the answer is yes. But it's a little bit tricky, especially if you've never solved a problem in this way before. So it's a bit of a trick question because they don't tell us that we can actually use the input array itself. This is the input array in our case, and we can write over it. So that technically doesn't count as using extra memory, but it's not something you would think of if you've never done it before. Uh, but how are we going to even use the input array? Well, one thing we're told is that every value in the input array is going to be positive, and we can use that to our advantage because we know that each value is gonna be in the range one through N, of course that means they're all gonna be positive. So how can we map every value in the range one through N to one of these positions? Because we want to know uh, for each value, suppose one, somehow we wanna keep track of, okay, one it does exist in this list. Okay, four, it does exist in this list. We wanna keep track of that so then we can know which values don't exist in this list. Well, the good thing is that the range of values we could have is between one through N and the range of indexes we could have is in the range zero uh, through N minus one. So there's a direct one-to-one -one mapping. One, uh, the value one maps to index zero. The value N maps to N, the index N minus one. Okay, so we have our mapping, uh, but how can we solve this problem now? Like I said, every value is positive. How about if we see a one, we set the value at index uh, zero to be negative one. Let's try that and see how it's gonna work. So we see the first value, it's one. So we're gonna map it to the index, which is N minus one, so zero. Uh, and then we're gonna set this value to now be negative. So now it's negative one. Next we see four. So we're gonna map it to its index, which is gonna be four minus one, that's three. And we're gonna set the value at this position to be negative. So it's now gonna be negative four. 
Next, we're gonna go to this index. Uh, we have four. So once again, we're gonna look at index three and set it to be negative, but it's already negative. So the operation that we're gonna use when we actually code this up is just take the absolute value of this value and then set it to be a negative. So we're gonna take the absolute value of negative four, that's gonna be four, then we're gonna set it to be negative four. So that's an easy way to code it up. That means we won't end up changing this. Uh, okay, so uh, now we're at the last value. We just visited this, now we're here and we have a negative four. So we're gonna map that to the index. We're gonna take negative four minus one and the index is gonna be negative five. So clearly we ran into a problem because what we found out is in doing this, we might be overwriting some values. Like over here, we, we uh, wrote to this value, uh, but net later we're gonna end up visiting that value. What happens if we visit a negative value? Well, once again, we're just gonna take the absolute value of it uh, because by changing each of these values to negative, we're not really getting rid of any data. We're just marking it to say that, okay, if, if the value at index three is negative, that means four exists in our array. If the uh, value at uh, index two is positive, that means two does not exist in our array, but the data itself is not changed. This is going to be a four or it's gonna be a negative four. So we can always take the absolute value of it. So now we're done iterating through the array. And like I said, since this is negative and this is negative, that means uh, zero plus one, one, and three plus one, four, these do exist in our input array, which is of course true, right? We had a one and we had some fours. Uh, but since the values at index one and two are positive, that means one plus one, which is two, and two plus one, which is three, uh, do not exist in this array. So this is going to be our return value. And that's exactly what we wanted to return in this case. So I hope this kind of helps you understand why we don't need extra memory. With that being said, we can now jump into the code. Okay, so now let's code it up. And like I said, uh, in the drawing explanation, we're gonna have two phases of this algorithm. Uh, we're gonna mark the existing values or mark the disappeared values, however you wanna look at it. That's gonna be the first phase. We're gonna go through every single value in nums. And uh, first we wanna map this n to some index, right? We could take n minus one, but we know that n might be negative uh, in some cases. So we wanna take the absolute value of it before we subtract one. So that will be our index. Uh, and to our index, so nums of i, we want to set this to be negative, but it could already be negative. So we're gonna take the absolute value of whatever it happens to be and then multiply it by negative one. So that's the first phase. Uh, now that we're done with this, we know which values exist in our array and which values don't exist. So now we're gonna build our result. And by the way, they say that the output result does not count as extra memory in this case. So technically we are using extra memory, which is funny, uh, but now we're gonna go through every value in nums and I'm gonna use a nice little Little helper function in Python called enumerate, which lets us go through the index and the value simultaneously. So I is the index, N is the value. Uh, and we know that if N is positive, that means this value does not exist in our input array. But what value doesn't exist in our input array? The index plus one, right? That's our mapping. So what we're gonna do is append to our result the index plus one one and that's really the entire code all we have left to do now is return the result and run it to make sure that it works oops i had a typo like always num should have an s at the end of it and as you can see on the left yes it works and it's pretty efficient so i really hope that this was helpful if it was please like and subscribe it really supports the channel a lot consider checking out my patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully i'll see you pretty soon thanks for watching